Tell us over there. What is this? All right, C six H six. So this is benzene. All right, cool. But is this benzene? Is this the actual benzene? Let's discuss about that. Right. So that is what we are here for. So this bond here, for example, this bond length here should be like a double bond. So it should be one point three four angstrom. Right. This one over here should be like a carbon carbon single bond. So this should be like one point five four angstrom. And why we are introducing this here right now is because we'll come to the conclusion later when the bond lengths didn't come out to be as we expected them to be. Right. The need for a new theory further got strengthened. All right. So yeah, this is what we have here. Right. So if this was your benzene, right? Let's say we have like placed it like this, and we are trying to view it like this. Right. So this is what we have. Right. Let's say we had something like this earlier. Let's imagine a hexagon here. Right. So if this is what we had. Right. Let's say let's imagine a hexagon here. Now we have placed it like this, and we are trying to view it from this angle. And this is what we have here. Now, what are all those? What are all these uh, purplish things? Right. So these are obviously what these are. P orbitals, and they are participating, and they are participating. If I name this carbon as one and two, these carbon one as two, and if I name these carbon as one and two. I'm not doing the proper naming because then we'll enter the domain of organic chemistry, nomenclature, everything. Not needed right now. Let's not spend time. There. So here we can see that here we have essentially what a pi bond. Following that reference, we can say that here we will have a pi bond as well, and between these two, we will have a pi bond as well. In fact, you can look at it better in this particular way, right? But then someone is like. Why only between these, right? So this one and this one, they can also have a pi bond, right? So that's also possible structure. That's another possibility, right? In fact, that possibility will be quite similar in energy to the other one, right? But currently, what you see here is these are localized pi bonds, right? So what happens is that if you imagine this stuff like this, that let's say some bond is happening over here, some bond pi bond is happening over here, some pi bond is happening over here. These are localized pi bonds, and the electron pair right jumps from between these two orbitals. It jumps from between these two orbitals, and okay. So wait a second. I think it will be better to explain over here. So let's say the electron pair right jumps from somewhere over here, right? And we basically ask this carbon, right? Hey, carbon, will you make a bond with me? Right? So carbon is like I've already, you know, uh, I'm already utilizing my p orbitals in bonding with the other carbon. So this carbon is like, hey, carbon, you know what? I'm bringing both the electrons. You can let go of your electron contribution in your pi bond. So this carbon, like, all right. So if that's the case, right? So this is what you get. Understand, right? So this carbon is like this carbon has gotten like two electrons. So this carbon has like a negative charge, right? This carbon has two extra electron, two non-bonding electrons. So this carbon is saying to the other carbon, "Hey, carbon, do you want to form a bond with me?" And then the same story continues. And if you do that, I'm not going into the detail because that's organic chemistry. If you keep doing that, right? All of a sudden, you realize that you're ending up with a different arrangement that you started with, and that different arrangement is looking like that. When you go in organic chemistry, you will study that there are also other possible resonance structures, right? But they are not as stable, and so they are not as contributing as we. Might expect them to be, right? Okay. And why are we doing this in the first place? Like, who told us that that was the structure of a benzene? Like, who told us that this was it? No, nobody told us. We just know that carbon can form four bonds, and we just know that it has six carbon and six hydrogen, and we just knew that it was a cyclic arrangement. The actual electron density was spread around the six carbons. The pi electron density was actually spread around, and we didn't know how to explain that using our current standing of covalent bonds. So we drew a couple of loose structures which could actually collectively, not individually, collectively 
explain this structure as a whole. So what does that make this one? This is a resonance hybrid. And what does it make this one, for example? These are the resonance structures, right? So these are the resonance structures and this is the resonance hybrid. So what do we have over here in hybrid? Now you can see there's this point mark that this bond, a single bond, this bond, a double bond. And the actual bond length turned out to be between 1.54 and 1.34. And it turned out to be 1.39 angstrom. Now the point is, let's look at resonance again. Let's try to, you know, just to collect all of our understanding of this session so far. And let's try to put it again. Let's try to go through it again. So read over there. What does it have? Right? Read over there. There was a keyboard, right? It got uh, knocked over. Cool. Phenomena of the delocalization of pi electrons. Right? Okay. Cool. Most important phenomena to explain the stability of certain molecules. Definitely. But what is, what do you have to retain and remember? It is the phenomena of delocalization of pi electrons but also we have lone pairs or non-bonding electrons participating in resonance as well in addition right so remember that all right so let's 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 wrap up our resonance topic so what are the rules must have proper Lewis structures only pi electrons or lone pairs can be moved overall charge of the system must remain the same bonding framework of a molecule must remain intact right so you're not like okay let's break this sigma bond let's move this nuclear over there let's rearrange something new and let's make up a new molecule no you don't do that right okay good further what do we have over here characteristics right so resonance structures are hypothetical resonant hybrid has its own individual identity it actually exists where resonance structures are hypothetical Bond lengths of resonance hybrid are intermediate to those of resonance structures. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.